Um, on Wolfpack, you had a very specific look and feel that you wanted going in. And it really leaped off the page to me because we had that discussion that it reminded me of Euphoria in yeah. the sense that I was seeing oversaturated colors and and all this this mood lighting and and some really great character work. Um did you get what you intended? I know nothing ever comes out exactly as you write it, mm -hmm. but did you get what you, when you were finished with it, when you looked at that first episode, when you looked at that pilot, did you go, yeah, this is what I was going for? Yes, actually. There was a moment uh, as well where I texted uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Lawrence Gray, and I said to him, your entrance into the episode is exactly how I imagined it would be. Ash flutters down from the sky and falls through the broken roof of an abandoned firehouse. A hand reaches up to touch the falling wisps of gray. Like snowflakes, the ash disintegrates into the palm of an 18-year-old named Harlan Briggs. He holds still in this slow-motion moment, fingers reaching into the air. And he's not the only one. The place is packed. The moment the ash disappears from his hand, the beat of the music drops and bodies snap back into movement, dancing to the electronic sounds pumping out of speakers stacked against the wall. It's a pop-up nightclub, a one-time only party at an abandoned firehouse to give a not-so-subtle wink at the wildfires plaguing the city. A DJ spins underneath a grid of laser light for a diverse, mostly queer crowd. <laughs> When he watched it, he was just blown away by it. And it's just got a certain um, quality of image and color and framing. Jason Ensler, uh, who is the director of the pilot, and Rich Paisley, who was the DP, I think they did a phenomenal job setting the look of the show. And I love it. It's different from Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf was, was its own thing, but Wolfpack is a beautifully made show, and I'm proud of it. Teen Wolf fans may recognize one of these guys. We first saw Austin get yoinked into the smoke on the highway, but then he showed up at the hospital, and now, just a few days later, in this scene overlooking the fire line, he looks fully recovered. Now, if Austin looks familiar, it's because actor Rio Mangini was a huge part of the opening episode of Teen Wolf Season 6. Rio Mangini, you brought him back from Teen Wolf. I love that kid. He is absolutely amazing. Such a wonderful person. I remembered from Teen Wolf, he was, I think he was only 12 or 13, and he had just such a good energy about him and such a desire to do well and to act and to be, um, to be, to find the scene. Um, I was so happy to actually bring him back and, and see how he grew as an actor. And he's great in this. I think people are going to like him. He plays a sort of conflicted character, <laughs> morally. <laughs> My favorite pairing of Kristen Ramsey and Ranger Briggs, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Rodrigo Santoro. My God, that man comes on screen and he's just magnetic and you just want to watch him. So. I call it Scully and Smolder. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Did you come yeah, up with that? Yeah, th those are brilliant. The, that's, that's the pairing, Scully and Smolder. And Rodrigo is a massive star, rightfully massive star in Brazil, but it's time for the rest of the world to get to know him. And I have felt incredibly fortunate to get him. I, and honestly, it was the same thing as Sarah when when they mentioned his name. I was like, we're not going to get Rodrigo Santoro. <laughs> but how important was that international? appeal to you when you were casting that part? It was huge. Uh, Teen Wolf is very big in Brazil. Um, and I, I don't write shows for just an American audience. I write it for anyone. Um, I love international television. I love stories uh, 
that uh, come from other cultures. So we wanted to write something that felt like it could be watched anywhere. Because, well, one of the things I definitely wanted to do with this show was do a city as opposed to a town. Um, every horror show out there seems to be a small town horror show. And I remember seeing things like um, uh, online, people would comment about how Beacon Hills has a nightclub now, or Beacon Hills has a really large police station. Um, I'm sitting there going, there's not an invisible barrier around Beacon Hills. <laughs> they can drive to the next town or the next city. But one of the concerted efforts in this in this show was to make it a city, make it more, I, my intention was to go more urban werewolf this time. And of course we got the tax credit in Georgia and I'm like, okay, we're back in the woods. <laughs> but not so much, because I, I, yeah. uh, the, the running across the rooftop scene yeah. with Blake is, is yeah. really beautiful. Um, the running down the street with Blake is really uh, beautiful. We got some great stuff out there, and especially in um, Christian Taylor directed uh, two episodes. Um, people remember because he directed Motel California from Teen Wolf, um, and he's got some great urban scenes. Uh, so we did we did hit that part of it, which I'm proud of. Talk to me about the that amazing house. I mean, what the heck is going on there? It's just a great house we found in Buckhead um, in, in uh, Georgia. We wanted to find a house where we could stage at least two episodes and that had enough weird places to give it a sort of haunted house feel, um, enough of an exterior. Um, and it felt like I wanted a house that felt like it could be up somewhere in the hills of Bel Air uh, or um, around Coldwater Canyon in LA. Uh, one of those old Hollywood type houses uh, where you could imagine some uh, actor wasted away in their years, later years, and the house was eventually bought by someone else, you know, so it's beautiful. And we can still find places like that in, in Georgia and Atlanta where we, we, we shoot, um, which is great. So I read the pilot and then we had the big reveal that Sarah Michelle Gellar was going to be in the show. How much did that change your vision for the show? Because I know what a Buffy caliber star can do to a production. And, and I'm wondering how much did it change or, or how much did the universe just warp around her and accept, and accept her in? I think it, it definitely changed, but it didn't completely rearrange to suit a, a star. It was always about the character for me. And the character was uh, the same character I had envisioned uh, when I first sat down to write the pilot without any actors in mind. Um, but uh, I mean, when you have someone like Sarah and he's, you're right for her. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty good with it, actually. I, uh, I, I always say the same thing at this point. It's up to the gods now. So I did the best I could. I did the best work I could in the, in the amount of time I was given in the, with all the parameters I was given. Um, so really it's, did I, did we please ourselves when we've watched the final product? Yes, we did. There were moments when I was watching in the final color correction and sound mix where I was like, okay, that works. So that makes me happy. <laughs>